Hey guys, what's up? This is uh, Data Gaming's FPS Vescore here, the solo laner, or the solo laner for Data Gaming. And uh, today we're doing a overall tier list for the entire game, not just solo. And this is for newer players, like my 3.11 tier list previously was for higher level players, this is going to be for newer players. Generally it's going to be the same, but gods are going to be move around, moved around a little bit, and this isn't just for solo. So Agni right now is not super good. I'd say he's probably in between A and B plus. And then for newer players, I'll say B plus. His combo is a little bit hard to get used to, and it's kind of it feels kind of clunky at first. But Agni can do really good things, and he snowballs really hard. But his early game is super weak until level 5, because he can't really clear without getting himself killed. Like he has to walk straight up to the wave to clear, and it's really unsafe, and you can die really easily. AMC, we're just going to put him down in C tier. He's just not good, and you'll you'll die a lot. Opwash, I think he's... Uh, how good is Opwash? I haven't seen him in forever. We're just going to put him in B tier. His combo is difficult to get used to. Like, it's difficult to min-max the 1-3-2 or the 3-1-2 or whatever his combo is. And then, like, uh, min-maxing your corpses and their damage and the anti-heal and the stun and the ult and everything. Like, it's just... It's a lot to keep track of on her. See, on her is, like... low skill floor high skill ceiling right like when you first start playing on her he's pretty easy but then when you're like a god at on her and you can hit every impale every pillar every ult everything it's like he's really good i'm gonna say he's a plus because his early pressure allows him to be really strong in lane he and every single ability of his is self peel his one is a wall and it has a slow his two pushes people back his 3 is a leap, and his 4 is CC immunity. On her is super safe to play, and he's really strong in lane, so I definitely recommend that you guys play him if you're ADCs. Ama. I think she's probably B+, plus for newer players, maybe A. We're gonna go with A, actually. Um, because Ama's like, she's hard to lane with, because it's really easy for you to fall behind and die, but after the laning phase, it's she's pretty much brain dead. Because all you have to do is ult when you see like three people grouped up and your team is ready to engage. You just ult, stun a few people, um, your two gets charged pretty much instantly in a team fight from like any damage ability. Um, you just pop that out and then you switch stances. But the only thing that's hard about Ama is her laning phase. Same thing in regular tier lists and in solo. Like She's, she's really strong, you just have to get past that laning phase and that's, that's going to be hard to get used to. Anubis is like... I, I'm so, like, he's easy for newer players because people don't know how to counter him, but I'm going to put him in C tier because you shouldn't really get used to playing him because anyone above, like, silver level really knows how to counter and play against an Anubis and can really punish you for playing Anubis, especially if the jungler is even relatively competent. Al Kwong, he's actually pretty easy. Uh... The only thing that's really difficult about him is, like, knowing how to focus one person down, ulting, and knowing when to get in or get out, or go back in or go out. I'm just, Actually, I'm gonna put him up in S. Because he's still really strong, and he's pretty easy to play. So yeah, we'll put him up there. Afro, probably B. Um, Afro's easy to play, she's just, she gets ganked a lot, but, like, enemy teams aren't gonna be building anti-heal. So, while you're a newer player, yeah, you can play Afro and you won't really get punished too hard for it. But if you're a higher level player, you'll get punished a lot, which is why I'm putting her lower, is because she doesn't transition from new players to higher level players very well at all. Same thing with Anubis. Like, he does really well against lower tier players, but really badly against higher tier players. So, I'm just sort of placing them lower to sort of drive you guys away from playing them, because if you get used to them, then when you face against people that know how to counter them, you'll get absolutely shit on. Like, every time. Apollo? Apollo's up here with on her. He's really easy, he has a lot of self-peel. Three abilities of his are self-peel. His two is a mez and gives him physical protections. His three is a dash and a knock-up. And his four is a CC immune ult that you that is global. You can travel across the map with it. So, Apollo's really safe, he's really easy to play, and he's pretty fun. So, Apollo's good. Arachne? I'd say she's kind of towards this end. Like, Arachne is sort of difficult to play. 
but well, she's not super difficult. The only thing is that she's really squishy, and you have to know when to use your one for healing and when to use it for damage. Um, we'll move her up one. Because she's not too hard. You just have to really read her abilities. Ares... Ares ult is, like, up here for newer players. It's, like, OP for newer players. But, like, everything else about his kit's kind of down here. Because, like, his shackles are really hard to get used to. So we're gonna put him in, like, B+. Because his chains are sort of hard to land at first. And a lot of people sort of, you know, chain, chain, chain. Where it should be chain, auto, chain, auto, chain, auto. To maximize damage. Or chain, wait, chain, wait, chain, wait to sort of maximize the amount of time in between chains, increasing the duration, increasing your damage overall. So, he has a lot of min-maxing, but at the same time, he's pretty easy to pick up. Artemis? Artemis as well, like, she's she has a lot of self-peel, but no escape, right? Like, every single one of her abilities helps her escape, but she doesn't actually have an escape. So you're gonna be relying on your support, and you're also gonna be relying on your CC immune ult, the slow on your three, the root on your one, and this movement speed buff on your two. So, but she does she does transfer well from lower tier to higher tier. So when you're sort of making that transition from like casuals to ranked to higher levels of ranked or whatever, she still does very well at a high level of play. So I think Artemis is not too bad for you to start learning or playing if you're new. Athena's up here. Athena's hard to counter, she's easy to play, she's safe, she's fun. Athena's pretty good. Athena's really good, but she's also really good for newer players because she's easy and transitions incredibly well. A Willix? Hmm. <laughs> See, the thing about a Willix, right? A Willix is really strong, she does a lot of damage, she has a lot of early pressure, but she's also really squishy, and it's hard to know when you should do damage with your one and when you should just hop off it and timing her ults her ult is sometimes difficult especially when you're working with a knockup on on your team so I'm gonna put her in maybe a because if you're playing her and you're knocking people up yourself and you're doing everything for you you're it's a little bit easier than if you're sort of relying on someone else to hit a knockup Bacchus, we're going to put him maybe down here, because the thing about Bacchus is that a lot of lower tier players don't really rotate out of duo if they're supports, like they just kind of farm with their ADC for the whole game, and Bacchus doesn't have the greatest laning phase, so that's kind of why I'm placing him lower, but he does transition very well, and once you start getting into tiers where the support will rotate out and help mid jungle and get that mid jungle support uh, core going, where ADC and Solo are off farming by themselves, that's like, that's, that's when Bacchus shines, is when he's like with his team, not really in the laning phase, so that's kind of why I'm placing him a little bit lower, is because a lot of times lower tier players won't rotate out of duo like higher tier supports would. Baka, Baka's actually really easy to play, and he's really easy to pub stomp with, and he transitions okay into the higher tier levels of play. So I'm going to put him up at A+, plus, just because, like, lower lower levels and lower tier, lower elo um, players won't really know how to counter Baka. It's same thing with Aphrodite, except Baka does really well. Uh, he, well, he does well at a higher level of play-ish. He does alright, but um, the thing about Baka is, like, he snowballs incredibly hard, and once you learn really how to play him and how to build him and synergize his abilities together. He's a very strong god, like especially against newer players because they just don't know how to counter a late game carry like him. Bastet? Oh, dude. Bastet, for newer players, is like S tier. Like, her cats destroy late game, or destroy early game, annoy late game. She has a ton of damage early game and a ton of kill pressure, and she will frustrate the hell out of newer players that can't deal with, like, getting tilted in a game or getting, like, annoyed or pissed off or whatever because that's like that's what Bastet does she like she annoys you the entire game and a lot of newer players they'll like let that get to their heads 
and then like by then she'll be fed. She'll be getting more fed because you're not playing to your strongest ability because you're pissed off. So in a lower tier of play, best set's probably S. Bologna, same thing. Bologna's easy as hell. Like Bologna's probably one of the easiest solo laners for newer players to pick up. And she can also jungle and support. So that's pretty much why I'm placing her highly. And she also transitions very well at a uh, into a higher tier level of play. Because she's just she's she's very strong. She does well in lane and out of lane, and she has multiple positions that she can fill on a team. So that's pretty much why. Kabraken? Alright. He's up here if you know how to play him, but like down here if you don't. I'm gonna put him like at, up at A plus because Kabraken will absolutely pub stomp. Like he will destroy if he gets like one kill, especially against uh, newer players that don't have the best positioning or anything. Actually, okay. We're gonna move him up to S. Considering positioning, we're moving him up to S. Because, like, Kabraken pub stomps. That's his thing, you know? He gets one kill and he snowballs off it, gets his pen boots, starts stacking, or he gets some pen, so gets Soul Reaver, gets tanky. People can't kill him, they can't deal with his damage, he carries, enemy team gets pissed off, goes to Reddit, complains that he's OP, whatever. Kabraken's pretty strong and he's pretty easy to pick up, at least against newer players, because people don't really know how to bully him in solo, at least for the first couple of levels. So, against newer players, Kabraken's a lot stronger than he is against... Um, older players. Same thing with Chalk. Chalk's really strong because he can just snowball. Like people in solo, or no, it's probably not solo. It's probably like a a two one two in the early, um, like early levels. There's no jungler usually, so Chalk can do very well because he can just like snowball off of kills, really well. And teams really can't deal with that. And plus the forty percent slow, teams don't know what fucking winged blade is at that level. So they, they won't be picking it up, or they won't be picking up, you know, Breastplate or anything like that. So Chalk can pretty much just destroy. Like, everyone's going to be building auto-build. Like, they they can't counter Chalk because he got fed early. Chalk's very strong, but the thing is, is like, he doesn't transition well into a higher level of play. So I'm going to put him down at A+, actually. Just because he doesn't transition well, and if you get used to playing a god like Chalk who wins lane by default and does nothing late then you're not going to do too well if that's like the only guy that you can play but the thing is like against newer players he's S tier but you gotta like you gotta learn to play people outside of Chalk and Bologna because higher tier players know how to counter that and you'll pretty much just get pushed out of lane and like out of team fights. Chang'e is like down here. Chang'e is just not good. Like even against newer players, Chang'e is just not good. Like you'll feel like you'll, you're doing nothing. And she's like, she's boring for newer players because for the first 15 minutes of the game, you're doing like nothing. Hey Adam, I'm just doing a tier list and I'm going to go to bed. Check out these fucking bracelets and shit that I got. Anyways, so yeah, Chang'e is just not super good and she doesn't transition well at all. And she's not even good against newer players. Like, there's nothing that really makes her pub stompy or anything. So I wouldn't recommend Chang'e. Kyren's up here. Kyren has self-heal. He has self-peel. He has the really strong ultimate against um, people that don't know what it does. You can basically get the reset almost every time. Kronos, same thing. His ult's just really strong. People will scream that you're OP because you just went back in time and now you're full and everything. And it's not too hard to play. Cupid... Oh god. Cupid's up here. Cupid transitions super well into a higher level of play. Like, he's actually in the meta right now, which is really annoying. And Cupid's actually strong against newer players and higher tier players. Just because of his early game pressure, um, his disgustingly strong ultimate, and um, self-peel, and healing, and all that kind of shit. Like, he's just very annoying to play against. And typically when you have an annoying god, they're like, easily countered or whatever. Cupid, not so much. Especially for newer players, they just can't really play against him. Like, the, a lot of newer players won't know how to play against early aggression. So Cupid just kind of snowballs and pretty much wins. 
I'm doing pretty well, thank you. I actually, like, got some of these from the parade. So, yeah, I'm doing pretty well. Fafnir? I don't know. I, I honestly don't know. I'm just gonna put him as new, I think. Eh, no, that's, that's lame. Put him as A. Fafnir's like, you're gonna feel like you're not doing much until you ult. That's pretty much Fafnir. He's not fun until you ult. When you ult, it's really fun, but like when you're not in your ult, he's kind of boring. And I feel like that would push a lot of newer players away from him. But he can pub stomp. Fenrir's like A+, plus in, in between, actually, we'll say. Because Fenrir will like... When people get picked up and dragged under tower, they will be so confused. People have no idea what the fuck is going on. So, that's... Kind of why Fenrir is strong. Okay, we're just gonna put him in A plus. And he, his early game damage is crazy, and he transitions very well into the late game and into a higher tier of play. So I think Fenrir is definitely a god that you should be looking at if you play jungle or solo. Freya, no, 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 no. Freya does nothing early game. Doesn't do as much as she used to late game, and it takes her a hell of a lot longer to get to the late game. Freya is also hard to play because you have to maximize your autos. Like, if you miss autos as Freya, that's like all your damage done. Like, it's gone. So, Freya is hard to play. She transitions poorly. And she's not as strong late game as she used to be. So, I don't really recommend Freya. Geb, on the other hand, Geb is super strong. I'm going to put him at A because he's really easy to play. You can save your teammates and yourself with your three. His ult's easy to initiate, his 2 is easy to CC, and his rollout helps you rotate around. So I think Gab is a pretty solid pick for newer players. Guan Yu, we're going to put him up at S, probably. Because people don't really know how to counter Guan Yu's weak laning phases when you're talking about lower levels. So Guan Yu's can kind of just stumble, like stomp through the laning phase and go into that teamfight phase where he starts to become really strong and teams once again, won't build anti-heal, so they don't know how to deal with it, and they won't know how to deal with his ultimate, because they won't know, like, when he's going to cancel it, because he can cancel it early. So, for newer players, Guan Yu is a hassle to deal with. Hades? I feel like Hades is pretty strong against newer players because of the ultimate. I think that's it, though. I don't really have much to say about Hades, to be honest. Like, I haven't seen him in forever. Hubwa? Fuck, dude. Newer players are going to actually think that Hub was OP. Right? Like, every newer player is going to be like, bam, SS tier Hub was. Nah, dude. He's like A, A plus for newer players. Because he's, he's easy to play. He does a shit ton of damage. He basically has three ultimates on short cool. Two of them are on short cooldowns. And for newer players he seems safe because he has the slow cleanse and the slow and the speed buff on his two but he's really not at all like a lot of times you have to burn your ultimate to escape so how was not that good and he doesn't transition well into the higher tier levels of play hell is just bad you won't do much as hell and you won't feel like you're doing much as hell hercules dude he's going to feel strong if you're new but once again, he does nothing in the late game, and he does nothing into the um, higher levels of play. So playing Hercules isn't the greatest idea, but he's easy to pick up, and he's easy to pub stomp with. So, and Herc's not terrible in solo, he's just not good. So if you want to be playing Herc, go for it. Hoagie, dude. Hoagie is strong as fuck even in a higher level of play. And he's even stronger in a lower level of play, especially if you can hit triple bounces, like in the jungle, like even just randomly. Phew. He will do a shit ton of damage, and people will hate it. Hunbots? Uh, Hunbots is kind of hard to play. Like, it's hard to sort of know when and where to use your ultimate, because it's just a very strong team-fighting ultimate. And if you fuck it up, then you're going to know that you fucked it up, and everyone's going to know that you fucked it up, and you'll have fucked it up royally. But if you can learn how to use it, and use it, like, effectively, then um, Hunbots will really stomp, and he'll he'll do very well. Isis, outside of the terrorism, Isis is really strong. Like, 
I'd say she's probably A+, plus because players, like, enemies won't pick Odin, because they don't really know what to counter, like, how to counter gods. So her ultimate, her two, and her one are going to absolutely piss off lower level players, as well as her silence, if they're playing someone like Guan Yu, who is one of the free, one of the free gods. So yeah, Isis is actually going to be pretty strong at lower levels, and decently strong at higher levels too. Giannis S, because newer players won't know how to deal with it, and his, his mobility is going to piss them off, they're going to get triggered, and tilted, and all angry, or whatever. So Giannis is going to be incredibly difficult for them to deal with, and yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Like He's going to be very difficult for them to deal with, plus he's going to nuke them. So Giannis will just pretty much pub stomp at lower levels. Jingwei? I don't know. Jingwei is weird. Like, you feel like you're not doing much as Jingwei, which is why I'm going to put her at A+. Because, like, you're pretty much just farming for the late game. Like most ADCs. But at least other ADCs can sort of fight early. For her, it's kind of harder until she gets her crit. So, yeah. But once you do get into that late game, Jingwei is super, super, super strong. And she transitions very well. So A+, for her. Kali, uh, probably put her at A+. Plus. Kali's gonna pub stomp. The only thing is, is that you can't pick fights early. Oh god, actually. Okay, against lower level players, Kali's gonna be S tier. Like, you can just go into ranked, and someone will start screaming that you didn't ban Kali. Yeah, we're just gonna leave her there. Because... People don't realize the amount of gods that counter her, or gods that even do well against her. Like you've got you've got Thor, you've got Neja, you've got a Willix, and those are just like three jungle gods that do incredibly well against Kali. Even Arachne does decently against her because of her heal and her stun. So people won't know how to counter Kali, and if you know how to build her correctly, then that's that's pretty much GG for the enemy team. Kepri, Kepri is also super easy. He's super easy, and he has the free revive. Which is going to piss off lower level players. And you'll do very well against them. Kuku Khan's like up here for lower level players. Because they don't know how to dodge the ultimate. But because it doesn't transition super well. Into higher level of play. I'm going to put him at A+. So yeah. You could argue that I could put one of these two gods at a like higher. Like either AMC or Anubis. Because they do do a shit ton against lower level players. But like. They don't transition at all, whereas someone like Kuku Khan kind of does. And like Agni does. Kind of. Kind of, eh, kind of. But yeah, so that's that's why they're lower. Even though they transition poorly, but do very well against lower level players. So yeah. Ugh. Kumba? Yeah, Kumba's up here. Kumba's easy to play. He's strong, he does a lot of damage, and he has a lot of CC. He's just strong against lower level players. So is Loki. Hate to say it, but Loki is going to be OP against players that don't know how to counter him, don't know how to play against him, or don't know what he does, or whatever. Medusa, she's, like, alright. Medusa gets out-cleared by hunters, but at a lower level of play, if they don't know to turn away from her ultimate, then that'll really screw them up. But I'm going to put her a little bit lower than the rest of the hunters, where the rest of the hunters are in, like, A+. I'm going to put her a little bit lower, because she doesn't transition well into the higher tier of play at all. Mercury. Merc's gonna be like, I don't know, I'm gonna put him in A+, because he's hard to get used to, but once you get used to him and you like start one-shotting people with your punches, he's super strong, and especially against lower level players I don't know how to build against him, or play against him. Neath, put her up here. Neath's easy. She has clear, she has heal, she has self-peel, she has a global ult, she has damage, early, mid, and late. Yeah. Nemesis, I'm gonna put her like down here. Because people won't focus down a target that has half of their protection shredded if you're playing Nemesis. Even if you've got the big arrow above them. People won't do it. People don't know what it means. They don't, They probably won't do it. I don't think you're really going to get much luck playing Nem. Neja though? Oof. Neja is going to be strong as fuck. If you're playing Neja in a lower level of play, you're probably going to stomp. That's, that's just it. Same with Nox, but Nox is harder to play and doesn't transition super well, so we're going to put her in A. Nuwa is hard to get used to, and she doesn't transition well at all into the higher level of play, so we're going to put her into B+, just because she's not even going to do that well against newer players, because, like, as soon as you ult them, for the first time, they're going to realize, like, okay, I can't get that low of health. 
And there you go. Like, they're gonna realize that. You don't even have to build anything to counter that. Odin's gonna be, like, strong as fuck against newer players, because they won't know how to play against him, or, like, anything like that. Same with Osiris. Poseidon. Um, Poseidon's Kraken just shits on people. Same with Ra, and his healing will piss him off. Raijin, if you can, if you know his combo, he's, like, S tier. But, like, if you don't, and you're not super good with him, then he's, like, A+, plus probably. But, at the same time, he will pub stomp against lower-level players, and he transitions super well, so I probably should put him in S, but, but like, his combo is weird, and so I'm gonna put him in A+. Plus. Rom is kind of hard to play, so we're gonna put him in just, just A. Because he's not crazy strong. Like, there's nothing about him that screams, like, OP if you don't know how to play against it. You know? So we're just gonna put him down there. Rata, just S plus because he's Rata. Um, same with Susano. We're just gonna do that right now. Robin's gonna be like S plus because he's just gonna kill them. Like, what? Yeah. Are there any other gods that should be an S plus against lower level players? And four lower level players, Kali. Okay. Same with Scylla. Yeah, Scylla's just gonna one shot, and she has no downside in the early game, so she's OP. Oh, Sirket. She's gonna be, like, good against newer players, but she's hard to play, so we're gonna put her down lower. Scotty? Whew. Rip new players, dude. Rip new players. Sobek? Eh. As soon as you get plucked for the first time, people aren't gonna, like, be like, okay, he's not gonna do that again. Yeah, he is. I think lower level players are gonna know how to play against Sobek after the first time you pluck them under a tower. So yeah, I don't think Sobek's gonna be super strong against lower level players compared to higher level players. But he does transition very well. Soul, put her A+, plus, probably. Like, she's strong, but she's not super strong. And she doesn't transition that well. We're just gonna put her in A. Sun Mukong? Eh, he's, I don't know, like, he's not gonna pub stomp, you know? He's not gonna get super fed. He's just gonna kinda just do things. I don't know. He's not gonna be like, Super strong against lower level players. He's not gonna be super strong against higher level players. He's just gonna be like he's just gonna be okay. Sylvanas. Yeah, 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 yeah. Here, here. No, S probably. People are gonna get pulled and pulled and pulled because it goes through minions, whereas Sobex pluck does not. And if he has any CC, or if a new player has no positioning and is just standing still, he's going to free pull and they're going to die. Thanatos is going to be harder, because it's hard for people to realize that their damage falls off, and it's also hard for people to hit as one. So I think he's not going to be as strong as you might think for a newer player. Thor is going to be pretty strong if you can hit his, if you can hit his uh, double tap and his... Ult, or at least his double tap with his stun, Thor is going to be super strong. Tear, nice. Tear's, tear's hard to play for newer players. Same with Uller. Vimana's like here. Vimana's going to just do a lot of damage and be really annoying and heal himself, but it's not like he's going to be carrying a game like any of these guys are. Vulcan. See, Vulcan will do a lot of damage and his ult's going to be crazy. But he doesn't do too well at a higher level of play. So we might just put him at A+. Shabalanke. We might actually put him higher. Because his late game damage is going to be crazy for newer players to deal with. So I think we're going to put him at S for a newer player. Xing Qian. Same thing. His ult's crazy. He's easy to play. So yeah, we'll do that. Ymir, for a newer player, Ymir is going to be super strong. Same with Zeus, and Zhongkui will fall, and I'll blink there. So there you have it, that is the uh, tier list for the entire game, for a very low level of play, we're talking like pre-30 bronze level of play, so there you guys go. Uh, thanks for watching. I've been Zephyas Vescor, signing out.